Happy New Year, Slackers. Welcome to 2021. It's been a hell of a year. 2020 is over. Let's start this new year off right. When a new generation of graphic cards come out, I crave for that ultimate power of bleeding technology to push it to the max. I just need that speed. There's just something about beating it into the submission with LN2. I don't know. But anyway, what card could be up to this task for this generation? The Asus ROG Strix 3090. Now any card can have the best GPU, but the best graphics card needs a VRM to match. If you want to get those ultimate clocks, you got to have the right tools to do it. The Strix has a badass VRM, 18 phases of goodness. It's all digital, none of that analog stuff. With the Further Wind 3, we had to hard mod and use variable resistors and to adjust settings, and we also had a bunch of settings we just couldn't adjust. Now, I prefer an analog setup to figure out how everything works first for a gen. And then digital to expand on that and get all the extra features. With all the extra features sometimes, it's hard to narrow down exactly what it is issue you might have. If you remove all the bells and whistles and you try to figure out exactly what it is, I don't know, it's just a little bit easier. Now an analog card is good for initial scores, but to own a generation of graphic cards, we need uh, a VRM to really match it up. So what are the benefits of a more stellar VRM? We get access to load line. We can actually control the load line curve. So that means we can get more stable overclocks the more current we're pushing through, and the 3090, when you're really clocking at like 2600, man, you're pushing a lot of wattage. We always talk about how load line helps to drive consistent voltage. It's much needed here. The 3090 is a beast pushing 1,000 watts possible on extreme. I don't know, we're gonna have to figure out, and I'm gonna let you know how far we can push it. Also, one of the cool features about this card is that we're able to actually overclock up the VRM, so we can actually change the switching frequency. In the other analog VRM, we didn't really have much access to it, and it's really needed to push that current. So we're basically overclocking the VRM. One of the things you have to be careful when you're adjusting the switching frequency, when you're overclocking the VRM, it's gonna increase heat. So you wanna make sure that you're actually cooling uh, the card, because when you're pushing that frequency up, it, it's gonna start heating up the card. The VRM itself is gonna heat up, so you gotta make sure you're cooling it properly. Add extra fans, so make sure you be careful when you're messing with frequencies. I know we all got slacked for 2020, but 2021 is gonna be epic. Make sure you like and subscribe, and ring that bell, baby. Tell me what you guys are doing for 2021 in the comments below. Now that we got a card to use, how do we actually control this thing? I give you the Elmore Labs EVC X2. Now this is the newest version. I've used his original version all the way back in I think 2012 or 2013. This gives the ability to fully control your card. If it's available on the I2C bus, you're pretty much able to access it. It can control all the voltages. We get access to the switching frequency, OCP and OVP settings. We also get load line, not just on the GPU itself, but also on the memory. So that's gonna help with efficiency. And since these GPUs are pushing so much current, having access to these settings is crucial. All these benefits give you the ability to really push your card, not just on LN2, but also air and water. All you have to do is basically solder three points to the card and you can monitor, you can even get temps on this puppy. It's one of the coolest devices and you can get your own at elmorelabs.com. I'll have a link in the description so you can get yours if you want it. Make sure you like and subscribe to watch future videos where I'm gonna take this puppy on liquid nitrogen in my quest to find the fastest 3090 in the world. Slacker out.